Hello, and welcome to this episode of Kidneys in the Kitchen. I am your host, registered dietitian nutritionist, Melissa Prest, and with me today is Lauren Williams, another registered dietitian who works with patients on dialysis at Mount Sinai Hospital. So welcome, Lauren. Hi. Thanks for having me today. Yes, thanks for being here. So today we are talking all about grilling and barbecues, which is super popular in the summer um, and super tasty. <laughs> <laughs> It can also be a little bit of a challenge for people living with kidney disease just on based on food choices and the heat and fluids and things like that. So we're going to talk all about fluids and food options and different things like that today. Yeah. So I think, you know, some of the, the first kind of things that I always, you know, hear from patients that I've worked with is, you know, kind of different food things that they're going to eat or, you know, what are things that they could really go for as better options at, uh, at a barbecue. So what kind of things do you talk about with your patients for that? Yeah, a lot of my patients, once it's summertime, they want to spend more time outdoors, either mm -hmm. picnics or grilling. And it's also a lot of a social experience, so they don't want to feel left out. Right. So I always encourage my patients to try to talk to, you know, family and friends about the foods they can eat. Mm -hmm. So that's available. Sure. So when they go to these events, they don't feel like they can't enjoy it. Yep. Yep. Um, a lot of good things, a lot of meats, especially if we do okay. fresh meats, yep. think chicken and fish, that's going to be a healthier option. Mm -hmm. Fun to grill, so you can yes. still get those nice flavors when Absolutely. you're grilling the meats. <laughs> but by limiting the more processed meats, we help cut out some of the sodium or some of those phosphorus additives, so mm -hmm. that way you can still have fun grilling meats, but you'll feel good after, too. Right, right. Absolutely. And I know we had brought in, and I will show you guys, uh, we brought in some food models of different foods that are, you know, maybe more commonly at some barbecues. And I know whenever patients see these, they always kind of laugh and chuckle a little <laughs> bit at them because they are, they are rubber, so they're kind of fun. <laughs> And we actually recently had gotten a whole bunch of new ones in at the office and everyone has been having a really good time um, playing with them, trying to figure out what food is what. <laughs> I've had a lot of activity at my desk lately um, playing with the food. So, um, so you want? I know you talk about some meats yeah, and different so things there. Yeah, so like chicken, legs, thighs, breasts, whatever, you know, your favorite type of chicken is. Those are really easy to grill. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you prepare it correctly, it's not going to have as much sodium or right. those phosphorus additives. And if you're doing, like, let's say, hot dogs, brats, hamburgers, yep. those types of things. Right. Um, fish I also have here, some salmon. some salmon. I like salmon to grill. But other seafood, too, like shrimp. Mm -hmm. I think those are kind of fun. Same thing with chicken to kind of make a kebab out of it. Yep. Yep. You can do, like, a veggie, add some nice um, low-potassium vegetables if you need to watch your yep. potassium as well. And we do have some green beans right yeah. there. <laughs> Green beans, I think, are pretty common, but also other types of beans. You can kind of see them here. Yep. Baked beans. Um, I feel like those are pretty common. A lot of my patients tell me they eat those at yep. barbecues. Yep. Once again, I just tell them to be careful. They are a little bit higher in potassium. Sure. can still enjoy them, but just watch the amount, the portion size. A lot of my patients may be eating more like two or three of these servings Correct. when they're eating out. Correct. So just kind of be mindful so we don't go over with the potassium. Right. And that kind of is the same thing. I feel like potatoes are pretty common, especially like, you know, baked potatoes. Easy and fun to grill, but you can kind of see here, I'll put it in my hand. This is sort of the serving for a baked potato. It could fit in the palm of my hand. I feel like most people's baked potatoes are, are at least twice to three times that size. <laughs> yeah. And also be careful with what you add in. I know a lot of people like to, you know, grab the salt shaker to season the potato. Correct, correct. So a plain potato is going to be a lot lower in sodium, and if you start adding in all the salt, that kind of right. right. negates that. And I think a lot of the nutrient recommendations, or um, I should say like the nutrient analysis, is based on potatoes about that size. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're talking a lot of potassium in that smaller potato. Mm -hmm. So even just half of that or like a quarter of that for yeah. a taste if you're, you know, really monitoring your potassium intake would be more appropriate than even that whole smaller yeah. sized potato. Yeah, exactly. It's all about, I feel like, with the potassium foods. Uh -huh. They're so common in a lot of the barbecues, so if you need to watch it, it's all about limiting the, do a smaller portion. Right, right. So you can still enjoy it, but that way we don't 
go overboard with the potassium. Right. I know we talked a little bit about, about the beans and the potassium as well. And so I know nowadays we talk about, you know, the, the older, I guess, education would always have phosphorus with yeah. the beans, which we know that it, it does have phosphorus, but we don't really absorb all the phosphorus yes. in the beans. So I think as dietitians, we're more concerned with the potassium mm -hmm. content, it's great for protein, um, but we do want to be careful of, like you said, the potassium yeah. and watching that portion. So I think the one thing that's really interesting about all these is really they all basically fit in the palm of your hand. Yeah. So if we take the beans and, you know, Lauren and I are both short, <laughs> so we have smaller palms than maybe other people do. Um, but that's, you know, about a little larger than the size of the palm of my hand. Um, same with like, this is maybe a little smaller. And then we look at like the salmon. We've talked about meats, right? Palm mm -hmm. of the size, size of the of palm the of your hand. So that's what we're kind of, you know, looking at with all of these. And even if we look at like the green beans, like those really fit there too. So, you know, if you don't have like measuring cups or measuring spoons, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're traveling out, because who really brings that with them yeah. to measure <laughs> anything? Barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to bring my food scale and weigh my food out. No one does that. So um, it's a really good rule of thumb just to kind of think of the palm, mm -hmm. the size of the palm of your hand and, and going from there. And then this, which I think looks like mashed potatoes, is actually... Yeah ice cream. Oh, <laughs> it could go either way. It could go either way. But yeah, that would be um, kind of how big ice cream is, which, you know, I, I don't do that for ice cream. I don't know many people that do. But, you know, that would be kind of um, your portion of ice cream. So, so those are always a little bit fun. Yeah. I always I like think it's a good models. visual. Yeah. I think a lot of times when you're eating out, like at barbecues and picnics, it's yep. more social, so it might be easy to not be paying attention to the portions as right. much. Right, right. And I know most people, yeah, when they're grilling chicken, fish, they're not grilling at that size. They're usually no. much larger, so yes. just to be mindful that that might be two or three portions, Correct. not just one. Correct. Yeah, especially in the store when you get chicken breast and you'll see a <laughs> recipe that says it calls for like four chicken breasts, and I feel like most chicken breasts are probably <laughs> like this big, <laughs> right? It's like both together for your one chicken breast. So, you know, really when you put in four of these, you're mm -hmm. getting basically eight servings yeah. of, of chicken breast. So, you know, the portions are definitely much smaller than what we, mm -hmm. what we really think they are. Um, so it's always important to really, to really note that. Yeah. Um, but I know some of the other things we were talking about with just the summer and barbecue is fluid. Yes. So we were kind of talking through a little bit on fluid and then we have a few like visuals here um, of kind of what that would look like. So I don't know if we want to, we can maybe move yeah. these in a little bit and I can do the overhead cam and we can kind of look at those from overhead and we can lay them down. There we go. See, a lot of my patients do have to watch their fluid intake. Um, they are on dialysis, but then if you're not on dialysis, a lot of patients still need to be mindful of their fluids. Sure, sure. And I know in the summertime it could be harder because it's hotter. Right. We feel thirsty. Right. I mean, a lot of times I encourage my patients, if you can, try to stay indoors, but if you're having a barbecue, you're going to miss out on all the fun if right. you're indoors, so it's inevitable. <laughs> right. So it's really careful, you know, to watch your fluid intake, so that way you're not going overboard and then you may not be feeling so well after that having yeah. all that extra fluid on you right but what i think it's important i always talk to my patients and ask how many cups a day do they drink mm -hmm. and this right here um is sort of showing what an eight ounce cup looks like so you can kind of see that in comparison to my hand you know that's about an eight ounce whereas some people their cup size may look more like this this is a water bottle but this is 16 ounces so right. that's if you were to drink one of these, that's two cups worth. Right. So I think it's really important to always talk about the size of yep. the cups so that way you kind of know how much you were actually drinking at the barbecue, the party, the picnic, whatever it may yep. have been. Yep. And I know for a lot of patients on dialysis, their whole total fluid for the day is really these two. That's it. And and if you, you know, if a patient has coffee or they have soup or they have, maybe they had a little ice, ice cream. cream or they had some gravy or jello, <laughs> that all gets added in and then this becomes much less fluid where maybe it's only that for the day. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely, um, I think, eye-opening when you kind of look at those different um, sizes, sizes and the, the difference that the sizes have. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some other things? If they can't have fluid, what are some other things that patients can 
use to kind of help with that dry mouth or thirst. Yeah. So like I said, I usually say try to stay cool mm -hmm. if you can, but obviously if you're enjoying the outside, that's going to be hard to do. Right. Um, the first thing I always tell my patients is to try to like save your fluids for when you're thirsty. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times people are kind of more social drinkers, not just with alcohol, but with water. So they're sure. at these events, they, other people are sipping on water or soft drinks, juices, whatever it is. So right. you're kind of doing it aimlessly. Yeah. Yeah. So I always say first thing, you know, save it for when you're thirsty. So mm -hmm. that way you're not just sipping on fluid and it adds up. Yeah. Another thing I always try to encourage is try to stick with water more. Mm -hmm. um, like carbonated drinks, like soda, isn't really going to help with thirst. Mm -hmm. It may just make you feel more thirsty. Yeah. So especially if you're outside, you know you're going to be thirsty. Try to stick with water so that way you're not just yeah. feeling, keep drinking more and more. And I know that a lot of times recommendations say any kind of fluid, it could be coffee, mm -hmm. it could be carbonated beverages, they all technically count as mm -hmm fluid and hydration um but yeah i always feel that it i'm always a little bit thirstier when i drink like something yeah. that's a carbonated mm -hmm. versus plain water um and then coffee actually is a mild diuretic mm -hmm. so if you are still producing urine you will actually you know produce maybe a little bit more it will encourage mm -hmm. you to you know to to use the bathroom a little bit more than if you had something that wasn't coffee so <laughs> yeah. just something to think about with that but a few other tips I have, because a lot of my patients tell me, like, they're drinking not because of their thirst, yep. but because their mouth is dry. Right, right. Which is pretty common because of medications or just because we're outside. Yep. Um, so I do have a lot of quick tips. Um, the first one I usually say is you could try, like, sugar-free gum. Mm -hmm. Chew on that. Mm -hmm. Sugar-free candies are also good to kind of suck on. Just make sure they're sugar-free. Yeah. So otherwise, that may just make you feel more thirsty. Right. So that's helpful. Um, another kind of fun trick I like to do is, and I'll bring this over. Sure. Is sort of um, doing fruits, um, taking low potassium fruits. Grapes, I think, are really good, but also berries, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. Um, they're low potassium, but if you freeze them and you kind of suck on them, chew on them, that could kind of help yep. with the thirst. Yep. And, you know, since it's a low potassium fruit, you're also getting... You know, the benefits of right. having a little bit of a snack, so you get some nutrients that way, too. Yeah. So a lot of my patients do this. They really like the grapes a lot. Mm -hmm. They think that's really helpful. Um, you just buy some fresh ones, pop them in the freezer, and bring them with you yeah. to the barbecue, the picnic. It's really perfect. And they are really tasty, like yeah. frozen grapes. And they obviously they're frozen, so they take longer to eat mm -hmm. than, say, like a regular grape. So you're not really going to be overdoing, mm -hmm. you know, the portion on them. Um, but they are pretty tasty. Yeah. So that's one other trick. Another one I like, I'll bring them over, is the lemon or lime, because they're sour. That mm -hmm. can also help with the thirst. Um, I usually tell my patients you could chop them up into wedges, and you could bite into that, mm -hmm. and that sour is going to help make some saliva, so helps with dry mouth. Of course, this doesn't work if you don't like sour things, right, but right. I have some patients who are willing to give it a try. Yep. I'm a sour fan, so I would... I used to eat lemons and limes as a kid, so to me this would be easy to do, but I know it may sure. not be for everyone. So that's another um, sort of trick, like I said, easy to kind of bring with you to the barbecue. Sure. And you could just kind of bite into that so that way you don't have that dry mouth. Right. And another just sort of general tip I know is sort of watching what you eat. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a lot of like salty, high sodium foods, that's going to make you thirsty. Sure. So more reasons why it's important to watch sort of the foods you're eating yep. but also spicy foods too could kind of make you want to mm -hmm. grab for the water mm -hmm. more so make sure you're not going too crazy with the spicy foods while you're right. out could kind of help and then the sugars especially mm -hmm. if you have diabetes you know if your blood sugars aren't as well controlled you can have that increased thirst yes. as well so having you know really good at controlled blood mm -hmm. sugars and then also you know just limiting foods that have a lot of sugar mm -hmm. too because that increases that that thirst um, response or that yes. desire for it um, yeah, and I always kind of would talk about sour-free, um, the sugar-free sour candies yeah. um, for patients, because same kind of thing with like lemons and limes, mm -hmm. it just kind of, you know, starts, my, my mouth is like starting to salivate thinking <laughs> of something sour, so it just kind of starts yeah. that, you know, your mouth from starting the, the, the saliva production, and it helps with the dry mm -hmm. mouth. Um, do you ever kind of like talk through about like rinses or just good dental hygiene as well? Yeah, I usually tell, I know there's a lot of like over-the-counter like sprays or mm -hmm. mouthwashes that help with dry mouth. Yep. So that's also another option I tell my patients, you know, sure. if they tried all the other stuff, they could do that. 
Um, that could kind of help with the dry mouth as well. Yep. Awesome. Well, we'll get back to grilling now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we know obviously not everyone has access to outdoor grills, mm -hmm. so we actually brought in two different um, ideas or examples of things that you can do to still do, you know, kind of grilling um, inside. So one would be just a grill pan that you can use this on the stovetop. You could grill anything. You could grill the chicken. Mm -hmm. You could grill um, other foods like pineapple, yeah. um, you know, anything that you'd really want to grill. You could do that in a pan. And then there's an electric grill um, at the end too. So that one is also easy. That's really good too in the summer if you don't have um, like central air conditioning mm -hmm. or air conditioning in your kitchen and you don't have access outside but you want grilled food you can just plug that in and it doesn't heat up your house like maybe your your stove would be um, but kind of thinking about foods that you can grill what are some like we've talked about the proteins and the meats but what are some other kind of fun foods that you could grill that maybe someone didn't think about yeah I think pineapple like you said that's a good fun mm -hmm. one you kind of use it too as a dessert yeah it kind of gets a more savory yep. once you grill it yep and it's lower in potassium so if you need to watch your potassium that's good right and, you know, it's kind of a different dessert that you can try. Right. Um, another thing I do also like is a lot of um, grilling vegetables, I think, are really good. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of patients who tell me they don't like vegetables. <laughs> but when you grill them, it kind of gives a different taste and texture to it that you may not otherwise get in, like, your oven or, you know, just if you're pan frying something. So a lot of ones I like, you know, like peppers are good, onions, um, you know, like zucchini, mushrooms, those are all sort of fun mm -hmm. vegetables. And I feel like sometimes when we're going to like barbecues, picnics, it could be a very meat heavy and then very carb heavy. Yes. So incorporating some vegetables and low potassium ones, if yep. you need to watch your potassium, is a fun way to get some vegetables in to kind of just have overall more balanced eating when you're having fun with your friends or family. Yeah. And I actually recently discovered that I really like grilled spaghetti squash. Oh, that's another good one. That is really delicious. <laughs> so if that's like another option, um, you know, I think, like I said, really kind of playing with the different vegetables mm -hmm. that are low potassium um, on the grill would be, would be great. Uh, and it's just like a really fun way to... I guess eat some of your veggies yeah. that maybe you wouldn't you wouldn't think about, <laughs> but yeah, the the grilled spaghetti squash was like I tell everyone about it because I think it is hands down the most tasty <laughs> thing I've ever had. So, um, and I'm not like a huge spaghetti squash like as like a pasta replacement. Mm -hmm. It's a little too smushy for me. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it grilled. So I recommend that to everybody to do <laughs> some grilled spaghetti squash. Um, yeah, and then you know, kind of just thinking through, we kind of talked about beverages and. You know, kind of some of the dif the different foods. Um, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else in terms of just challenges or ideas for patients yeah, um, at, think, at the barbecue? I think one thing. I mean, you know, I'm talking about doing chicken, fish. A lot of people when they're grilling, they're not just putting a plain chicken breast on the grill. They want to season it. But a lot of sort of if you're buying like pre-made seasoning blends, um, have a lot of salt in it typically. Or if you're doing sauces, like sort of like a barbecue sauce mm -hmm. or anything similar in that barbecue family, once again, it's going to have a lot of extra sodium in it. Or it could have some phosphorus additives in it as well. Right. So if you're watching your phosphorus, that's something else to keep in mind. Yep. So I think it's really important to make sure, you know, you still want flavor in your food, but we don't want to be adding in sodium and phosphorus if that's something you really need to be watching. So around the time when it's, you know, grilling season, I always encourage my patients to get sort of like seasoning blends that don't have salt mm -hmm. in it, so that way they can get the flavor that they need, and there's lots of different types out there. Mm -hmm. Or you can always make your own, sort of add in different seasonings to make your own blend without the extra salt. Right. Um, one thing to watch out for, and I always warn my patients, is to make sure not to get like the salt substitutes, Yep. because they add in potassium, so mm -hmm. if you need to watch your potassium and your sodium, switching that for that, we're going to have an issue with potassium then. Right. So just to be mindful. And then same thing with like barbecue sauces to mm -hmm. give the flavor. Um, I always say read the labels, try to choose ones that are lower in sodium, don't have phosphorus additives. Um, or once again, we can always make your own. Right. Because sometimes my patients say there's too many out there, too much <laughs> label reading, it's too confusing. Yes. So I say just do it yourself because then you know what you put in. Right. So that way... You could get the flavor that you need, but without all that extra phosphorus, sodium, potassium to mm -hmm. help keep you 
healthy. Absolutely. Do you have favorite herbs and spices that you like to use when you're cooking? Yeah, I mean, I think I use, you know, just pepper. Plain pepper is pretty good, but mm -hmm. there's different types of peppers, like lemon pepper can sure. be pretty good. Sure. Um, sometimes I like to add a little more spice. You could do like more like a chili pepper, cumin, that type of stuff to mm -hmm. kind of get a little more spice to it, mm -hmm. um, to get a little more flavor that way. Yeah, um, I definitely feel like I use cumin a lot, mm -hmm. chili pepper a lot. I've been using paprika a yeah, little paprika. bit more. Um, and some of the ones we have here today for our marinade that we're going to mm -hmm. make, um, like the garlic powder, yeah. onion powder, oregano basil, um, those are probably my more common ones that yeah. I use a lot. Yeah, at sometimes home too. that's surprising. I feel like keeping it more simple sometimes brings out the flavor mm -hmm. more. So a lot of my patients say they can't live without the salt, right. but once they try <laughs> these other seasonings, they realize, oh, this is just as good. Yep. Maybe, and it kind of brings out different flavors to like the meat or whatever you're seasoning. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to be a little adventurous, try something new in order to replace that salt. Absolutely. So you still get flavor, you can still enjoy the barbecues, but keep your salt under salt intake under control. Right. And I think one thing to keep in mind with any herbs and spices is they're all they're always gonna have a little bit of potassium. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we're limiting salt and most people aren't gonna be, you know, yeah. And covering them with basically <laughs> breading their food with herbs and spices. But to always keep in mind Something that we don't want to, you know, be too overly zealous with some of our spices. Keep the potassium in check. So we are going to do a marinade that we can yes. use, and I will um, pull up the recipe. So if you want to talk through the recipe a little bit. Yeah, so. Before we make it. Yeah, I know. So it says it's a marinade for grilled chicken, but I also think it would be good to use for like seafood, especially like a white fish, like tilapia, or maybe like shrimp, if sure. that's what you're grilling. So it doesn't have to be just for chicken. Um, but yeah, so it's going to have white vinegar, canola oil, and then some of those spices we were saying, um, black pepper, garlic powder, and dried oregano. So it's a pretty you know, basic, simple recipe, easy to make, but, you know, you mix it all together, which we'll show, and then you just sort of, um, you know, put it over whatever you're marinating, the chicken, the seafood, whatever it may be. You do it, you know, overnight or at least for mm -hmm. a few hours, depending on when you get around to marinating right. it. And that right. just sort of helps it enhance the flavor, so it's not just a plain chicken breast. But like I said, you could kind of see the nutrient content over on the other side, it has no sodium in it, pretty low in potassium, and also very, almost no phosphorus. So it sort of gives you a lot of flavor, but without adding in stuff that a lot of my patients need a limit. Right. So that way they could kind of enjoy, you know, other sort of foods at the barbecue, maybe something with a little bit of potassium to help keep everything balanced. Right. And you can, you know, use this as well. You can kind of marinate the chicken and use them in your pans at home too. So, you know, you, you know, it's not, you know, marinating can be used for any cooktop if it's mm -hmm. a regular grill outside or your indoor grill pans or electronic grill as well. Yeah. So I think we're going to move over to the, um, we're going to take a look at that now, so I'll move that plate out of the way, and we'll move this out of the way. And we are going to kind of put together a marinade. Um, yes. So obviously, all, it's pretty easy to yes. kind of combine it, but we will just show you how easy that is. So the first ingredient is the distilled white vinegar, and it's half a cup. So I'll measure it. I know when I cook at home, I don't use measuring cups too often, so you can always <laughs> kind of eyeball it. Also, depending on how much chicken you're marinating, you can always scale up or scale down. Right. I know some of my patients have very large families, so yeah. they may need a lot more marinade for <laughs> everyone that's coming to their barbecues. Right. And I feel like cooking, at least, is one of those forgiving, yeah. it's a forgiving, uh, I don't know if it's a forgiving art or skill that you mm -hmm. can, you can play around with a little bit. Baking is a little bit more exact, yeah. where you really need to kind of make sure you measure it so that things bake correctly, but I'm the same way with cooking. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll throw a little bit of this in, maybe a little more of that, you and know. way you can make adjustments. I know, like, my dad hates garlic powder, so in this recipe, we would maybe do a little bit less of that, maybe add more pepper and the oregano. Okay. Um, so you could kind of make adjustments depending on who's coming to the barbecue. Um, the next recipe is the canola oil. Once again, it's about half a cup. I just pour that in. And now we're going to be adding in the spices. So like I said, I'll follow the recipe, but you can always add more or less depending on how you'd like things to be seasoned. Uh-oh. 
well, this may just, I think it's just a, <laughs> it's just a pepper mill. So we're just going to grind up some grind pepper it. in there. <laughs> oh, I think it's. Yeah, take this it This way. Okay. Yep, we got it. We got it. So it's about a fourth of a teaspoon, so I'll just sprinkle a little bit in. Like I said, this is how I cook anyway. <laughs> this is probably why I'm better at cooking and not so much at baking, because <laughs> I don't always like to measure everything. And then next we got the garlic powder. Just kind of measure out. So this is a teaspoon measuring size, so I'm trying to get about a fourth. Yeah. Kind of see there. And I'm someone who just loves garlic, so I'd be like, garlic! <laughs> yeah. Like I said, <laughs> add more, add less. That's why it's sort of nice to do your own cooking. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's convenient when you're doing your buying, like seasoning blends yeah. or yeah. barbecue sauces. Um, but it's kind of fun when you do it yourself because you can add in the flavors that you like. And then lastly, some oregano. So we can add that in, and then we just sort just of gonna whisk, whisk it. it all up. You just want to make sure it's kind of all incorporated. And then that's sort of, like I said, a very basic, easy marinade. Pretty easy to do even if you're not a culinary expert, which some of my patients, there we go. You know, they're not sort of experts in cooking, but this is something they could easily throw together so that way they can right. season their foods and still enjoy and have fun at all the barbecues. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Any last tips or tricks for our audience? I always think it's important, you know, um, with all my patients, you know, of course I want their labs to look good. I want them to be following the diet and to be healthy. Right. But, you know, a lot of my patients think it's really restrictive, so I always want to encourage, you know, it's still... You know, even though you have to watch what you're eating, you can still enjoy and have fun with friends and family. You could still go to these barbecues and enjoy life. And there's plenty of things you can eat when you're on, when you have CKD to keep you healthy, but to still have fun with your friends and family. Right. Well, I appreciate you being here today and sharing with everyone. And then you can watch this and all of our other videos for this series um, on our blog, on our homepage. This is the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois homepage. You can go to Patients and Families, scroll down to Diet and Nutrition. And on there, you'll find all the other videos and our blog to help you with your just living with kidney disease. Oh, and there we are. There's for our YouTube channel. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Until next time, we will see you later.